Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith. In the past I haven't been the world's greatest fan of these so-called announcement thoughts videos. Um, however, I've decided to uh, kind of have a bit of a change of heart because in the past I've found that a lot of times by the time I get a camera in my hand and post a review video, a lot of people have already um, you know, had a lot of questions they've been wondering about for a while about new cameras or they may not even realize that there's a new camera out in a given range and they may have already bought something else. And uh, to limit all these problems, I decided to start doing more of these announcement thought videos. Um, it also allows me to give my initial first impression upon launch of a camera. And sometimes my impressions kind of change whenever I get a camera in my hands. And sometimes it's for the good, sometimes it's for the bad. So I felt like sharing these initial thoughts can be good from that respect as well. Um, with this new Nikon D7200, it's a very interesting camera. I kind of had a very, very good idea of what the specs were going to be already. However, I looked at the camera in the photographs and honestly, I was, I was a bit disappointed. And the reason I was disappointed is because as Nikon has come out with newer cameras lately, um, like the D750 and even the D5500, they've gone to a different type of body design. Um, they've started doing uh, a little bit of work with their body design. They've switched to some different materials, uh, like this new carbon fiber composite material. And that's allowed them to make the cameras much smaller and much thinner and give them much better grips and, uh, and things like that. On the D750, we saw that and uh, we saw the moving screen. And then, you know, the 5500 came out and I thought, wow, you know, that is an entry level body and it still has this same type of design. So surely whenever D7200 comes out with it being a bit higher end camera, surely it will have that new technology, right? Well, that was not the case. <laughs> um, the D7200 looks pretty much exactly like the 7100 did in respect to the body and it has no moving screen. It's still a fixed screen. So it's not the end of the world, but I was a bit disappointed by that. However, looking at the specs, looking at the specs, I definitely say it's a pretty solid upgrade. This camera does use Nikon's newer XP4 processor, and that pretty much brings about the same types of changes that we saw on all the other cameras that use the same processor. It does bring the ability to do 1080p video at 60 frames a second. Um, the camera also has a little bit better battery life as well. You know, you get about 100 shots more roughly. Uh, the D7100 was around uh, 900 shots per charge. This newer camera will be around 1100. So not a huge difference, but if you shoot a lot, you will no doubt see a difference in battery life also. Um, we're still dealing with a 24 megapixel camera. However, this pixel count slightly different. The 7100 was 24.1 megapixels. This camera is 24.2 megapixels. Not a huge difference there. However, that definitely tells us that we've gone to a different sensor in this one, and it's not really just a uh, tweak to the processing of the camera. The 7100 was interesting in the sense that it's one of the few Nikon cameras that didn't use a Nikon sensor. Sorry, not Nikon sensor, Sony sensor. Um, the 7100 actually used a sensor that was made by Toshiba. So looking at this new 7200, I kind of have a feeling, although I don't uh, see it necessarily confirming what I've read, but it looks as though this new camera actually uses a Sony sensor. Uh, that's also evidenced in, uh, the change is also evidenced in the fact that the ISO range is a bit different. On the D7100, we had a native ISO range of 100 to 6400. This new camera goes from 100 to 25,600. So quite, quite a change there. Um, now, obviously most people are not going to be shooting at 25,600 ISO, but I think, it's a, I think it's safe to say that if we're looking at this new camera at uh, say, for example, 3200 or 6400 ISO, and we compare it to the older D7100, it's safe to say that we will probably see a better, uh, better, uh, re uh, better image uh, thanks to the newer processing tech and newer, newer sensor design. Let's see here, and uh, wow, <laughs> how much longer before we actually have a camera that does 1 million ISO? Uh, the boost on this one goes between 51,200 and 102,400. 
in comparison to 12,800 to 25,600 on the 7100. So basically, basically this new camera's native ISO range encompasses all of the boost range on the 7100. So pretty interesting, no doubt. We still have a 51 point autofocus system. Um, it's the 3500DX focusing system. This newer camera uses version two though, and that is something that we, um, it's a similar design to what we saw in something like say a, a Nikon D810. So now we do have the ability to autofocus down to minus three EV as opposed to minus two EV. So basically if you're shooting with your camera in much, much lower lighting conditions and things like that, the, this newer D7200 is going to be a lot more responsive for you. Um, speaking of video, um, I have been hearing that this new camera can also change f-stop while in live view. So you don't have to actually, you know, exit live view, change the f-stop, and then go back into live view again. So that's something that Nikon has slowly been putting on lower and lower cameras. It wasn't long ago that we could only do that on a D4 and a uh, D800, but whenever the D750 came out, they gave it that ability. And so it's nice to see that they have brought that ability down to the D7200 series also. So very good thing there. Uh, let's see here. Of course, I, I believe I just mentioned the video differences. 1080p at 60 frames a second now. The frame rates are still exactly the same. Uh, we can still do up to 6 frames a second if we're shooting the full DX area at 24 megapixels. If we drop down to the 1.3 crop mode, which results in a roughly 15 megapixel picture, the camera can do seven frames a second. So that's something that hasn't changed uh, since, the, uh, since the D7100. However, the newer camera has a much better buffer now. And uh, if you remember my video comparing the D7100 to the Canon 70D, we saw that the Canon definitely had a big advantage in terms of action shooting because of the difference in buffer size. The new camera, however, let's see here. This is what I get for not putting all my things in order on my list. Um, yes, so the new camera can actually do up to 18 pictures if you're shooting um, a burst in 14-bit RAW, whereas the 7100 was only six images. So a much, much big, we have a much, much uh, greater ability to shoot in continuous now and we'll be able to shoot much longer without the buffer filling as fast. So definitely an advantage there. In comparison to something like the 70D, I will say that, you know, I'll say the same thing that I said in the T6i announcement thoughts video. Canon still has a big advantage in terms of video um, if you're shooting with autofocus. Um, cameras like the D7200 will of course be able to autofocus in video mode, but on Nikon cameras, you are limited to contrast typed uh, focusing in, in uh, live view and in video. On Canon, thanks to their dual pixel CMOS autofocus, you actually have full-time uh, full phase detect autofocus in video mode if you're using a camera like, say for example, 70D. So if you want to have very fast and responsive autofocus in video mode uh, and have your, have your DSLR behave more like a camcorder in video mode in regards to focusing, you are definitely still going to be, a bit, be better off with a camera like a 70D. But um, anyways, I'll save a little bit of that for a future comparison video. This camera also has, let's see here, what else we have? Oh yes, the Wi-Fi. So Nikon, they've been putting Wi-Fi on more and more of their cameras now. Um, that's something that started with the D5300, and then we saw it on the D750 and the 5500 as well. As Nikon kind of gets away from using the uh, WU-1A and WU-1B adapters, I've noticed all the newer cameras with the Wi-Fi built in, um, like the 750 I tested recently and the 5500 I tested recently. Both of those cameras have much faster performance in Wi-Fi. I've noticed that the live view works better, and I've noticed that the Im images transfer faster as well. So this is something that I expect to see continued on the 7200. The 7200 though does take it one step further and it actually offers NFC in Wi-Fi and it's actually the first Nikon DSLR that can do that. So if you have an Android powered device, you can use that NFC uh, technology. And um, I guess whenever I test the D7200, I'll have to see about borrowing someone's Android phone 
uh, because I'm in the other camp, guys. So, anyways, I'll have to get someone's Android phone to be able to test out the NFC. But uh, that's a nice addition. Also, and that looks to be like the main points. Um, between now and the official review video, just write me in the comments below about what you want to see. Um, I know that I've got lots of cameras that I need to get out into the field more, so I do do be patient with me on that. I am working on it, and I do plan to do some more action type testing. Um, so yeah, I do plan on doing that in the future. But if there's anything else that you guys want to see about the new D7200, write me in the comments below in this video. And by the time I get the camera in my hands, I'll just simply go to this video and look at the comments. And whatever you guys are talking about and have questions about the most in this one, I will be sure to clarify in my 7200 full review video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, definitely fill the comments up down there so I know what to talk about in the future. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.